um, let's use that. As that lower concepts with the diversified and really educated minorities, uh, we started business in 2012. And our main interest is in real estate, transportation, and uh, agricultural sector of the economy. What is your vision and mission of ASBA Global Our mission is to provide uh, a local services to the populace while taking into consideration their value for money. And our mission, part of our mission is also to contribute to the development of our economy, both locally and internationally. What would you say are your core values? Our core value, one, is our integrity. We put it at utmost. We don't promise what we don't do. Also, transparency is, our, is part of our value. As we are open to any party we are second. As both the party A or party B, we always try to be transparent in whatever we are doing. Then we put our client interest as customers and give them well satisfied and well satisfied and services to them. That is not just providing them their need of their or in their needs, we also focus on the welfare of our customers. For instance, now if we have provided them a home to live. So after then, they call them concurrently to ask about the living in the new home as it is. Thank you very much. You, you actually started as a scout of global concepts and related to, you actually just expanded to real estate. Uh, why, why real estate? Why, what uh, time did you see that you think? Um, we know that housing is the basis, one of the basic necessities that people need it. And this is a service that is uh, I think a few years back, it's rare. You only see old men being the best that it's a dense black. You don't see young men doing it. Because one is that we don't, let me say that people don't see that in profession. So uh, we just see that there is a challenge uh, issue that people need this service in our own, in our own immediate environment. But yeah, people are lacking information. People that need land, they don't know who to go and meet. People that have land or property don't know who to sell to. So we just think of coming in and render this service as a profession. That's where we come up with the ASDAF home with as a subsidiary of ASDAF. Let's talk about the services you offer. Well, part of our service is one, agency services. Agency services in terms of we help uh, landowners to market their properties. Or perhaps we help those who are in need of houses to look for houses where they need the house, where the landlord as well will be able to market their properties. That's the agency, where the agency comes in. Then we also serve as a facility manager, whereby we help property owners to manage their properties, collecting rent on their behalf, monitoring the repairs and renovations, then giving them necessary information as regards to their investments. Likewise, we serve as a consultant firm, where we give real estate stakeholders these people that give them intelligent information as well as to the economy, giving them what they're supposed to know that they're lacking. Like for instance, now some some we don't even know that okay, maybe the land use charge has increased. So you know that that will directly affect the rents. That's one. Two, maybe you may not know that okay, like four years ago when the uh, former governor increased the uh, what's it called survey fee that from like two hundred in this to four hundred. Some don't know. So this information we need to bring it to them. And at times people have this money they want to invest, they don't know how to start, they come to us, we give them a free consultation. If you don't charge us, you just come just like uh, as we are now, anybody can just go, okay, please, I have a property at a certain place, what can you advise? Should I sell it off or rent it or continue to rent it? We give to such advisors. As well, we are investment managers to help people, investors to manage their funds. I mean, to, to buy houses on their behalf, to buy land on their behalf, and we said, whereby we, we serve as a fund manager there. Yeah. Likewise, we help in title documentations. Like, for instance, now you buy a land or you buy a property, you need to perfect the, you need to perfect your title. So by perfecting your title, it's not something you can just do on soon. I, uh, so you can't do it alone. So you need to engage professionals in it. They are the ones that know where and where to verify those documents and where to perfect them for you. So that's where we come in. 
Likewise, you serve as projects for being advisors, whereby maybe you have a property to develop, you come in, tell you what and what to do. Okay, this is the this is okay. For instance, now in this area, I want to build an apartment for rent for rent. They're not just coming and say, okay, yeah, I want to build an apartment, let me build a duplex. We advise, okay, let me build a duplex here. People are looking for mini flats, or people are looking for two, two bedroom and all So why not just build? So when you come here, then you supervise. You don't need to be on site. You use the money. So let's work for you. So we come in and you pay us our supervisory and supervisory charges. I think those are the basic uh, services we have. Thank you very much. I just said you have said uh, you have project supervisory. Can you just let us into the projects you have done in the past? Yeah, we have engaged in many projects in collaboration with some developers and some uh, individual investors. We have, uh, we have a place in Nicotum that's around the government road there where we supervise a six bedroom duplex with Pinky Road. So we also have like 16 units of uh, duplexes in Mobile Road at a that there whereby we actually engage in that supervision. Likewise, behind us there, there are like four units of three bedroom duplexes. We also engage in supervision of it. Then in Abidjan Jiawe, we have like four units of three bedroom there as well. Through, uh, uh, Thank you very much. Can you give us a brief in your opinion? How has the real estate sector been since you started? Uh, anyway, uh, should I say before, like four years ago, it's been interesting mm-hmm. and highly depressing. We know that real estate is highly depressing, but mm-hmm. as of recent, due to this economic situation, investors are finding it difficult to invest in real estate. That's some that you don't have, uh, let me say, maybe they are afraid of risk. And I do tell them that the higher you take, the bigger risk you take, the better your expectations, you understand? So, what I only advise them is that, okay, you investor can only take advantage in this tight economy. Because there are some people who have property there, they don't have money. They want to sell the property at all costs, just for them to have money. So, it's an opportunity for investors. They just buy and hold. Wait for when the economy will do. Then you sell your own house. So we don't, as a real estate uh, consultant, we don't see a uh, recession as a what's it called, as a constraint to investment. But some investors I understand this. When we put it to them as this is an opportunity for you. For instance, now maybe let's say in uh, Abidjan, the value of a plot of land is like ten million on a normal ground. But due to the tight economy, somebody wants to ah, ask please. Let me to say, even if it is 5 million, I will buy. It's an opportunity for, for a serious investor. Okay, let me, I have the 5 million, let me just buy. For people who are thinking, okay, this money is tight now, I would like just to put 5 million out. But those people that have futuristic uh, plan, okay, let me buy it. Maybe in another two years, I can even sell it at 5 million. So, we always advise them. We don't see this economy as being a constraint to investment, but still, it's a very tight situation. Very, especially this, uh, this uh, what's it called? This present government uh, policy is not helping the foreign investors. Foreign investors they are afraid now in Nigeria. They don't know how to come in and like for instance now a client was telling me that uh, as that that property I don't think I will rent it. Please just say that I want to use that money to invest where I am. I don't like Nigeria again because one is that they will just build house. Nobody to buy. People that want to buy they will just be negotiating as a lower value. People that rent, you find it difficult to collect rent to, to pay to divide the world to pay rent because of the tight economy. So it's not helping them in that in that in that it's not helping them. But I think with the time, as we know that property, property does not eat now. I mean once you have a property, you have it. And the follow of uh, the follow of real estate is that it always appreciates. It will continue to no matter how tight it is, it will continue to appreciate. Thank you very much. I uh, heard you say, you said we always advise them, mm. the consultant, I think we to time to document it. Before we came on here, we were like, this challenge of cloning of something that we try to try to fill. Can you, as a consultant, tell us to the extent of advice for you on how best to go about that type of things? One, uh, what we uh, normally advise our clients is that it's not just about investments. And it's not just about taking risk. The reasonable risk has to be taken. So why cannot just tell you that yeah, I have a property at Aja and it's one million, come and buy. 
fine, I want to buy. What do you have there? Are you the real owner? Because there are a lot of previous people there that will be selling the program. So, what's like we have a hub and we have a ASDAF hub whereby we liberate people on the real estate industry to give them the information. So, part of what we tell them is that before you commit yourself financially on any investment, one, you need to ask for the receipts that the person owns. Either the person bought from the family directly or he bought from another individual. The receipts of ownership. That's number one. Number two is the survey. Because in real estate, you need to have all these uh, documents. Survey, you need to ask them, okay, who owns the land? Fine, you have seen the receipts. How about the survey of the place? The survey just means that that particular place has been separated from the other parts. That belongs to you. One. So, two is that the agreement between you and the uh, the primary owner of the land. Fine, in, in Nigeria, we have what we call uh, uh, the land act, the land act, use act. Whereby it said the all land belongs to the state government. But notwithstanding, the government has not disregarded agreements with family. So you need to have agreements with family. And so anybody that wants to sell property to you, ask for the agreements between himself and the family. And if it is the family that is selling to you, you need to ask them, okay, has this place been released to the family? Yes, that's what is where is the evidence? Is it that you have a court judgment or you have a gazette? So if you don't have the two, you normally don't have advice. Except it's a freehold. And if it's a freehold, it's two things. Is it that it's freehold in the sense that, okay, government does not have anything to do with the place now, but it still belongs to the government. So what you need to do is, okay, buy it, commit yourself, but you need to know, be sure that the land is not committed. But if the land is committed, don't go here. No matter how, don't go into this. Government will not release it whatsoever. But if it is not committed, fine, you can go in, then you, you do what we call ratification. That way, pay government to ratify it, just like a CEO. So, it will be released to you. So, one, before you commit yourself financially, do all this necessary. By right? asking for the receipts, asking for the title documents, either a consent or gazette, or by what you call a CEO. Then, you ask for the survey and agreement between the person that is selling it and the previous owner. How do you how how do you be able to verify because there's a lot of forgery in Nigeria? So I just paid to forge the receipt that you give to you, forge the CEO and you give to you. How sure are you? How would you be able to verify that these documents you are collected are original? Well, uh, as a consultant, if somebody comes to us now that okay, this is the receipts for my life, what we do okay, who is the family? But one thing any agency needs to understand is in your area of discipline or your area of locations, you must know some family members by time to like the head of the family. So what you need to do, okay, if they tell me that okay, this is a uh, receipt and the receipt bears as that family. As that family means that it's not only one person. One, there must be a head of the family, um, perhaps the buyer, and there should be a secretary to that family. So we don't need it again, we've seen the receipts. We do an independent search on, our, on ourselves. We we'll go to the family, we we'll ask, okay, this is the family. Okay, please, we have to show person that says he has bought land from you. And this is the receipt he has given to you. We know if it's a fake receipt or it's original. But they have their templates. Okay, if they confirm that these are receipts and the signature is then fine, we are done with the family. If it's a title document, all we need to do is go to our house the land registry. Confirm, okay, this is the number on the gazette or this is the number on the CFO. They chat it out. What's the name there? Okay, Asgard Global Concept and Co. Okay, fine. Who are the directors? These are the names. So, meaning that the signature that is there must be in correlation with the agreement that they will do for us. For instance, now, if this paper bears Mr. A Global CFO and I'm signing another name agreement with Mr. B. Nobody will accept that from you. So the name on the CFO with the government must be in correlation with the agreement you want to have. You have people that are buying land now, okay, maybe the bought land, fine. They confirm that it has CFO, but they don't know whose CFO it is. This. You only know that, fine, ah, it's CFO, okay, let me buy. And Mr. P will go and sign on behalf of Mr. A. Then maybe in another five years, Mr. A will now come back to come and give me the right to owner. This is my land, and this is my evidence of ownership. 
very much well advised there. If you're just joining, if you're just joining us or watching the EOL Business Network, with us this morning is Mr. Abdullah Far Asimi, the Managing Director of ASGAF Global Concept. We ain't seen anything yet. Program continues. We're going to go on a commercial break. Right. Yeah, you're doing well.